Sam Bankman-Fried, or SBF as he is known in the crypto world, was once hailed as a billionaire philanthropist and visionary who wanted to revolutionize the financial system with his crypto exchange FTX. But behind his charismatic persona and altruistic claims, he was allegedly running a massive fraud scheme that collapsed in November 2022, wiping out millions of investors and customers. What's more, SBF showed a remarkable lack of care and diligence in his dealings, often playing video games during important meetings or interviews, ignoring regulations and risks, and using dubious accounting methods to prop up his failing business. This video will explore how SBF became one of the most notorious fraudsters in history, and how his lackadaisical attitude contributed to his downfall. SBF's rise to fame and fortune began in 2017, when he founded Alameda Research, a quantitative trading firm that specialized in crypto arbitrage and market making. Using his background in physics and his experience as a trader at Jane Street Capital, SBF quickly amassed a fortune by exploiting price differences and inefficiencies in the nascent crypto market. He also gained a reputation as a savvy and generous donor to effective altruism causes, pledging to give away most of his wealth to charities that aim to maximize positive impact. In 2019, he launched FTX, a crypto exchange that offered innovative products such as leverage tokens, futures contracts, and prediction markets. FTX soon became one of the largest and most popular platforms in the industry, attracting millions of users and billions of dollars in trading volume. However, SBF's success and fame also attracted scrutiny and criticism from regulators, competitors, and skeptics. Many questioned the legitimacy and transparency of FTX's operations, especially its relationship with Alameda Research and its native token FTT. Some accused SBF of using FTX as a front to manipulate the crypto market and enrich himself, at the expense of his customers. Others pointed out the risks and dangers of FTX's products, such as high leverage, liquidations, and volatility. SBF dismissed these concerns as unfounded or exaggerated, claiming that he was following the rules and acting in good faith. He also maintained his image as a philanthropist and a visionary, announcing ambitious plans to create a super app for crypto that would allow users to do anything with their money. SBF's downfall began in November 2022, when FTX suffered a series of technical glitches and security breaches that caused massive losses and disruptions for its users. FTX's website went offline for hours, leaving customers unable to access their funds or trade. FTX's leverage tokens malfunctioned, resulting in erroneous liquidations and negative balances. FTX's prediction markets were hacked, allowing attackers to manipulate the outcomes and steal millions of dollars. FTX's customer service was overwhelmed, failing to respond to complaints or requests for compensation. FTX's token FTT plummeted to zero, wiping out SBF's fortune and the value of his customers' holdings SBF initially tried to downplay the severity of the situation blaming external factors such as market volatility, network congestion, and malicious actors. He also promised to investigate the issues and restore normal operations as soon as possible. He assured his customers that their funds were safe and that they would receive compensation for their losses. He also appealed to his supporters and followers to trust him and stand by him. However, SBF's explanations and assurances soon proved to be false and inadequate. Investigations by regulators and journalists revealed that FTX was riddled with fraud and negligence, and that SBF was directly responsible for most of the problems. It turned out that SBF had been using FTX as a personal piggy bank transferring billions of dollars from FTX-linked entities to his own accounts without proper disclosure or authorization. 
He had also been using Alameda Research to manipulate the crypto market and inflate FTX's trading volume and revenue. He had also been violating securities laws and regulations by offering unregistered products and services to U.S. customers without proper licenses or oversight. As the evidence against SBF mounted, he faced a barrage of lawsuits from FTX's customers, creditors, investors, partners, and regulators. He also faced a public backlash from the crypto community, who felt betrayed and angry by his deception and misconduct. Many former supporters and admirers turned against him, calling him a fraudster, a scammer, a crook, and worse. His reputation and credibility were shattered beyond repair. SBF tried to defend himself against the accusations and lawsuits, but he soon realized that he had no chance of winning or escaping. He remained in the Bahamas, where he had bought a luxury property with FTX money. He hoped to evade extradition and prosecution by hiding in the island nation. He also hoped to salvage some of his wealth by liquidating his remaining crypto assets. However, SBF's plan backfired when Bahamian authorities arrested him on December 12 at the request of U.S. authorities. He was charged with 12 counts of fraud, money laundering, wire fraud, securities fraud, conspiracy, obstruction of justice, making false statements to regulators, and tax evasion. He faced up to 115 years in prison if convicted on all charges. He was detained at Fox Hill Prison, a notorious facility known for its harsh conditions and rampant violence. He agreed to be extradited to the U.S. after spending a week in jail. He was released on $250 million bail and placed under house arrest at his parents' home in Stanford, California, where he awaits trial. SBF's house arrest was not as comfortable or pleasant as he had hoped. He was constantly monitored by federal agents and electronic devices. He was restricted from using the internet for anything other than legal purposes. He was not allowed to make any purchases over $1,000 or start a new business. He was also forbidden from contacting anyone related to FTX or Alameda Research, except for his lawyers. SBF's isolation and boredom were compounded by his lack of visitors and supporters. Most of his friends and associates had abandoned him or distanced themselves from him. His family and relatives were disappointed and ashamed of him. His former customers and victims were hostile and vengeful towards him. His only companions were his lawyers and a few loyal followers who still believed in him. SBF tried to maintain his optimism and confidence in the face of his predicament. He claimed that he was innocent and that he would prove it in court. He also claimed that he had done nothing wrong and that he had acted in good faith. He also claimed that he still cared about his customers and that he wanted to compensate them for their losses. However, SBF's claims were contradicted by the evidence and testimony presented by the prosecution of his former colleagues. They showed that SBF had been lying and cheating for years, that he had knowingly committed fraud and negligence, that he had abused his power and influence, that he had harmed millions of people, that he had evaded taxes and regulations, and that he had obstructed justice and made false statements to cover up his crimes. They also showed that SBF had no remorse or regret for his actions, that he felt entitled and superior to everyone else, that he cared only about himself and his wealth, that he lacked empathy and compassion for his customers, and that he was a sociopath and a narcissist. The transfers were revealed by the new management of FTX, led by John J. Ray III, who was appointed as CEO after the bankruptcy filings. They said that Bankman Freed and five members of his inner circle received $3.2 billion in total as payments and loans, mostly from Alameda Research, a crypto trading hedge fund affiliated with FTX. 
Bankman Freed and his associates spent the money they transferred, such as buying luxury property in the Bahamas, making political and charitable donations, and transferring funds to non-debtor subsidiaries in other jurisdictions. Most believe, based on the evidence, Alameda got the $2 billion from FTX customer funds that went to SBF. Alameda allegedly borrowed billions of dollars from FTX accounts and used them for risky trades that resulted in losses. Alameda reportedly masked its liabilities under a pseudonym account on FTX called Our Korean Friend and modified software code to allow it to borrow unlimited funds from FTX. Many employees and outside auditors were unaware that FTX did not have enough money to match customer withdrawals. SBF has not yet been convicted of any fraud and is still awaiting trial. However, based on some of the allegations and evidence presented by the authorities and the media, here are some possible points explaining how SBF was a fraud. He diverted billions of dollars of FTX customer funds to his privately held crypto hedge fund Alameda Research, without their knowledge or consent. SBF used those customer funds to make undisclosed venture investments, lavish real estate purchases, and large political donations he misled FTX customers about the safety and security of their funds, and the financial health of FTX. Sam misled FTX investors about the profitability and valuation of FTX and Alameda. He misled lenders about the collateral and repayment ability of FTX and Alameda SBF misled regulators about the nature and scope of FTX's business activities and compliance with laws. Sam commingled customer funds with Alameda's trading funds and used them for risky trades that resulted in losses. He masked his liabilities under a pseudonym account on FTX called Bar Korean Friend and modified software code to allow him to borrow unlimited funds from FTX to SBF created a bogus Alameda subsidiary called North Dimension where FTX customers could deposit funds without disclosing its relationship with Alameda or FTX. He fraudulently obtained access to a US bank account for North Dimension by lying about its purpose and activities. Sam made unlawful political contributions to both Democrats and Republicans through straw donors to acquire bipartisan influence. SBF failed to register FTX as a securities exchange or broker-dealer with the SEC or any state regulators. Sam failed to implement adequate anti-money laundering and customer identification policies and procedures at FTX. That he failed to disclose material conflicts of interest between FTX and Alameda and other entities he controlled or invested in. SBF failed to maintain adequate capital reserves or liquidity at FTX to meet customer withdrawal requests. He failed to safeguard customer funds from unauthorized access, theft, hacking, or loss. Sam falsified financial statements and reports to conceal his fraud and misrepresent FTX's performance. SBF obstructed justice by destroying evidence lying to investigators, tampering with witnesses, and fleeing the country. He violated federal tax laws by evading taxes on his income and assets derived from his fraud. Sam exploited his reputation as a philanthropist and an environmentalist to attract customers, investors, partners, sponsors, etc. while engaging in fraudulent activities that harmed them. He exploited his influence as a media personality and a crypto leader to manipulate public opinion and market sentiment, while engaging in fraudulent activities that benefited him. SBF exploited his connections with politicians and regulators to lobby for favorable policies and avoid scrutiny, while engaging in fraudulent activities that violated laws. He exploited his relationships with celebrities, influencers etc. to endorse his products and services while engaging in fraudulent activities that deceived them. 
SBF exploited his employees' trust and loyalty by involving them in his fraud scheme without their knowledge or consent. He bought out Binance stake in FTX using customer funds without informing them or obtaining their consent. Sam spent $240 million on luxury property in the Bahamas using customer funds without disclosing it or paying taxes on it. He gave himself $2.2 billion in loans and payments from FTX entities while running a massive fraud at the crypto exchange. SBF gave $587 million in loans and payments to his former director of engineering Nishad Singh, who later pleaded guilty to fraud charges. He gave $246 million in loans and payments to his co-founder Gary Wang who later pleaded guilty to fraud charges. Sam gave $87 million in loans and payments to his former co-CEO Ryan Salami, who later pleaded guilty to fraud charges. SBF gave $25 million in loans and payments to his former Alameda co-CEO John Samuel Trabuco, who later pleaded guilty to fraud charges. Sam gave $6 million in loans and payments to his ex-girlfriend Caroline Ellison, who later cooperated with the government, as part of her plea deal on fraud charges. SBF deceived many employees, auditors, journalists, politicians, celebrities, influencers, partners, sponsors, customers, investors, lenders, regulators, competitors, peers, friends family members etc. about his true intentions, actions, and motives behind his crypto empire. It seems that SBF likes to multitask and distract himself with video games while dealing with serious matters he was playing. League of Legends during a pitch meeting with Sequoia investors for FTX's Series B he was playing Storybook Brawl during an interview on Twitter Spaces with Unusual Whales and five other panelists about the FTX collapse. The SBF was playing Storybook Brawl to unwind and clear his mind after losing $16 billion and facing potential prison time. Sam Bankman-Fried was once hailed as a crypto visionary and billionaire, but his reckless and fraudulent actions led to the downfall of his FTX empire and the loss of billions of dollars for his customers and investors. He is now facing multiple federal charges and lawsuits, while his former associates are cooperating with the authorities. His story is a cautionary tale of how greed, arrogance and deception can ruin a promising career and tarnish an entire industry.